Welcome to Bali and our 25 plus essential tips. In other episodes in our Bali series, we're going to cover the beach, resorts, popular sites, and more. So stay tuned. But for this episode, we're going to cover the tips you need to know before traveling to this Indonesian paradise. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, like, and share so we can continue to provide you with the best in travel tips, news, and information. Tip 1. Let's take a closer look at the weather in Bali. As you can see, the temperature doesn't really fluctuate that much throughout the year. What does change is the amount of rain and the humidity. And don't pay too close attention to the weather forecast online. When we went, the weather forecast predicted a few days of rain, and it only rained for a few hours. So the weather forecast is not always spot on. Tip 2. Best time to go to Bali. Well, basically the best time to go is when it works out well for your schedule and your budget. Obviously during the peak season, you're going to deal with higher prices and larger crowds. And during the rainy season, you definitely have an opportunity to save some money. We recently went in June and the weather was spectacular. I believe it rained for about four hours in the week we were there, although we did get some cloudy days. Tip three, how many days to spend in Bali? This is a tricky question. If you're coming from Europe or the Americas, I'd say seven days minimum especially if it's your first time. Remember, it's a long flight. And if you're coming from Australia, it's a much shorter flight. So if you're in a crunch for time, you could probably do four days, be a nice long weekend. But most of the people we spoke with were staying a week, two weeks, some even a month. Now that's nice. Now that you decided how long you're gonna stay, let's decide on where to stay. The concentration of tourist areas are located in the southern part of the island, near the ocean, of course, except for Ubud, which is the spiritual hub of Bali, and it's located north of these regions in the mountains. And one region that you should definitely try to include in your itinerary. Now, how do you decide which towns to visit? Well, it all depends on how long you're staying, your budget, and how you like to travel. Do you want to stay at a five-star resort or looking for a budget vacay? Maybe looking for some adventure? Or maybe you just want to hang at the beach and catch up on your surfing? Or you might just be looking for a spiritual retreat? Well, here in Bali, you have many options to choose from. Now, the age-old question that people have been asking for centuries. Tip 5. Hotel or rental? Now, we've traveled quite a bit, and we've stated our share of both hotels and rentals. And I think throughout all our travels, we've probably done more rentals in the form of Airbnbs than anything else. But here in Bali, we stayed at two incredible resorts. We're going to do a video review on each. We'll add the links below. Now, this isn't a steadfast list. It varies depending on the person. This is just a guideline to help you get started on your decision process. Another important question to ask yourself, tip six, driver first tour guide. And some of you might just want to rent a car or a scooter or take ride chairs to each site or destination. It's your choice. But if you're going to book a driver or a tour guide, let's look at some of the possible key differences. Now you can schedule a driver for just one trip, a day, or for the entire length of your stay. They can take you to the sites you want to see, transfers from the airport to your resorts, and some of them even have prepackaged plans. Now with a tour guide, you can usually pick from one of their prepackaged site plans. Sometimes they let you vary the itinerary. And if you get a really good tour guide, they'll explain to you the significance, the history, the rituals at each site. And as a bonus, some of the tour guides will be nice enough to offer to take photos of you at many of the sites. I'll add a few links below to help you get started on your search for tour guides. But the best way to find a tour guide is through recommendations. So driver, tour guide on your own, do what works best for you and your perfect vacation. Tip 7. Now that you know where you're going and how you're getting around, it's time to plan your itinerary. Like we mentioned, many of the tour guides and drivers have prepackaged plans to choose from. All you have to do is select the one that works best for you. And they have a wide selection of itineraries to choose from. Whether you want to see indigenous animals, 
explore the beautiful temples of Bali, participate in a local ceremony, or maybe you want to explore the local cuisine and go on a food tour, or go out and enjoy some Bali nightlife, or maybe you just want to sit on a beach, relax, do a little surfing, enjoy a cold beer, wait, even better, enjoying a beer on the beach with a nice refreshing coconut. Yeah, that's more like it. Now, for our trip to Bali, we did something a little different. We made a list of the sites and places we wanted to see and sent it to our driver. We also used some of his suggestions as well. That way, we were able to see and experience Bali the way we wanted. But there's also one more important thing to consider when planning your itinerary. Tip 8. The traffic. Traffic in Bali is a serious issue. Going in and coming out of most of the major towns in Bali, you're going to have to deal with a two-lane highway, one lane going each way, so any incidences on the road will most likely delay your plans for the day. So make sure you consider that when planning your itinerary. Still, the country remains steadfast on improving this issue. Now, here's a few examples of the traffic. Traveling from the airport to Abud in the afternoon, I think it took us about an hour and 40 minutes. Then one afternoon, traveling from Abud to Seminyak, took us about an hour and 45 minutes. Now mind you, if you travel early in the morning or late at night, you will hit less traffic. Tip 9. Some forms you might need to fill out before entering the country, like your visa, customs, and tourist tax. First, we'll take a look at your visa and e-visa. We'll list the link below to the official site to get your e-visa, where you can get a visa for 30 days, 60 days, or even longer. Now, I know some people have had issues on this site. If you are having difficulty, try switching to a different browser and make sure you upload your photo and your passport in either JPEG or PNG format. Now, there's been a lot of discussion whether it's better to get the e-visa or visa on arrival. Now, we completed all three forms prior to entering Bali, and we landed mid-afternoon. So, from getting off the plane to reaching our baggage claim, I think it was under 15 minutes. I believe that's the fastest we've ever experienced at any international airport. We just scanned our barcodes and walked on through. But, we had to wait about 45 minutes for our luggage. And between getting your visa and customs, it was about a 45 to 50 minute wait. So the question is, would you rather wait online or at baggage claim? Personally, I'd rather wait at baggage claim. But remember, wait times will vary, depending on how many flights are coming in. But then again, why take the chance? So in my opinion, getting all the forms completed ahead of time takes a little stress out of your travel. But Bali has hit some headlines recently in the news by possibly getting rid of the need for visas from some countries, so keep an eye out for that. The last form here we're going to talk about is the Bali tourist tax, which you could also pay online, link below. Now, nobody ever checked for our tourist tax receipt, but just pay it. It's the right thing to do. Now that you have all your forms filled out and you're ready to leave the airport, let's talk about tip 10, getting a ride from the airport. Getting outside the airport can be a little chaotic, as most of the people here are drivers with signs up waiting for their rides. Plus, there's a lot of taxi drivers following you saying, ride, 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 ride. It's a little annoying. One option you have is to book a ride through the Grab app, as currently they do not permit pickup at the airport through Gojek or Bluebird. You have the option of booking a taxi at the airport, but it can be a little expensive. You could also pre-book it through Kluk. I'll add the link below. But I think the best option is if you have a driver or guide already, just inquire whether they can pick you up at the airport as well. Speaking of rides, takes us to tip 11, getting around Bali. And these are three highly used methods for getting around. Grab, Gojek, and Bluebird. Bluebird is a local taxi service working throughout Indonesia. Grab and Gojek both have car and bike transportation, as well as food delivery and more. You'll see them throughout Bali. And if you want to save a little money, book a Grab or Gojek bike, strap on a helmet, and hold on for the ride. For us, we downloaded the Grab and Gojek app prior to traveling to Bali. We just found the Grab app a little easier to use. It was really convenient as we can sign up for the account and enter our credit card information all before we traveled. It worked just like an Uber. You could see a few rides here in Ubud. The prices are inexpensive. The drivers were very nice and on time. 
And here's another example from Abu to Semenyak. It's about a two hour ride. It was a little under 20 US dollars for the trip in a car and a little under $5 for the trip on the back of a bike. Although I'm not sure you want to sit on the back of a bike in hot, humid weather for over an hour, but that's totally up to you. Tip 12, download WhatsApp. Now, if you already have this app on your phone, you're good. If not, download it now not only in Bali and Indonesia, but WhatsApp is used in many countries around the world. And we used it to communicate with our resort, our driver, restaurants, and some of our friends. It's great because it works on Wi-Fi, so it doesn't use your data. And plus it could send large files without issue. So if you travel, it's an app you should definitely have on your phone. Tip 13, power outlets used in Bali. They use a type C and type F in Bali, which is the same type they use in many countries across Europe. One safety tip, if you're gonna use something like a hairdryer or a curling iron with a power converter from somewhere like the United States that uses 120 volts, make sure you have a proper converter. If not, you can damage your device, the outlet, or worse. Now let's talk about some people's favorite pastime when traveling, tip 14, bargain shopping. And there is plenty of bargain shopping to do in Bali. You can shop in stores, but the best bargain shopping is usually at the markets and along the streets. Now let's talk a little strategy when bargaining in Bali. First off, if you see an item you like, go to a few different booths. Since many of them have the same items, you can get an idea of the price and make sure you brush up on your haggling techniques as you will need them in Bali. And when haggling, I would start about 50, if not 60% below their asking price. Lily found this dress, they were asking 600,000. She ended up getting it for 100,000. Great bargain, and she looks beautiful in it. And remember, if you don't like the price, be polite, say no thank you, and just walk away. Some of these markets do accept credit cards, but always bring cash with you. Which leads us to our next tip. Tip 15, cash is king. You should always carry around some Indonesian rupiah on you. You might need it when you're haggling at the market, trying to catch a taxi, or maybe you just want to grab a beer on the beach. You just never know. Now, you have a few options if you need to pick up some cash while in Bali. You could pick it up at the airport, which I don't recommend unless it's an emergency because it's usually a higher rate. I think your best options to pick up some cash are at a reputable ATM or money exchange in town. Money exchanges in Bali will exchange money from many different countries, but with ATMs and money exchanges, there are scams involved, and we're gonna touch base on those a little later in the video. Moving from cash to cards, we're at tip 16, credit, debit, or wise card. First, the wise card, which is very popular globally, as well as here in Bali. Here, we're gonna look at some fees involved with using your wise card at an ATM. Here are fees from both the US dollar and the Australian dollar, just so you have an idea what it's gonna cost you. Great thing about the wise card, it has security as you only load up what you think you're gonna need and reload when necessary. Now let's move on to debit cards for purchasing and ATM withdrawals. For purchasing, not a good idea, as you won't receive the protection you would through a credit card. For ATM withdrawals, it is a good idea, although you might have to pay some fees. We'll touch base on that a little later. And for credit cards, purchasing items is a good idea, as you usually have protection through your credit card company. And ATM withdrawals, not such a good idea, as credit card companies usually treat ATM withdrawals as a cash advance with possible fees and a very high interest rate. Now let's look at some YTM quick tips. First of all, try to use a credit card with no foreign transaction fees. Try to get a debit card that reimburses you for all transaction fees. We both have them and use them stress-free around the world. And if you're using your credit card at a restaurant or a store and a screen pops up asking you if you want to pay in the local currency or your home country's currency, always pay in the local currency. You'll usually get the best rate. Tip 17. Don't drink the water. That should go without saying, but we're going to say it anyhow. What I liked about most of the resorts, they provided us with water in glass bottles, not plastic, which is better for the environment and also better for our health. 
We also had a very nice surprise when we went out to a restaurant one night. We looked on the menu. It was 42,000 rupiah for water, 39,000 for beer. So that made for a very easy decision. Two beers, please. That brings us to tip 18. You're in a tropical climate. Of course you're going to have to deal with mosquitoes. So use insect repellent and use it quite often. This one here is the one they provided for us at our resort in Abood. It's all natural, it smells nice, and it worked pretty well. And if you need some, you can buy insect repellent at almost any convenience store. It's inexpensive, and Safel seems to be the brand they carry most. We used it, and it worked pretty well. But we usually travel around with our own insect repellent when we travel to certain cities. It's an insect repellent with a little bit higher than average DEET level. We used it in places like Africa and Cambodia, and it worked extremely well. Now, if you are going to use a product with DEET in it, make sure you read the instructions, precautions, and risks, especially around small children and pets. Now that we dealt with the mosquitoes, let's take on the sun. Tip 19, bring sunscreen. It goes without saying that the sun can get really strong in Bali, even when it's cloudy out. The UV index here easily climbs to 11 plus, and some people develop a heat rash from the strong rays. I recommend bringing sunscreen with you, because sunscreen is quite pricey in Bali. So by bringing some, you'll save a little cash. Now let's look at staying in touch while you're in Bali. Tip 20, SIM, eSIM, and Wi-Fi. I know you're in a paradise and you probably don't want to stay too much in touch with the outside world, but if you have to for some reason, maybe work, an eSIM is your best option as you do not have to remove your SIM card and you could set it up prior to traveling. And if your phone isn't compatible with eSIM, you'll have to buy a SIM card and swap out your current SIM. And then you have Wi-Fi. You could find Wi-Fi throughout the island, mostly in hotels, restaurants, and cafes. Generally, the Wi-Fi speed on the island ranges from okay to not so great, but fast enough if you have to send an email, do a little web search, or navigate around the island. For me, I have a T-Mobile plan from the States, which gives me unlimited texts, 5 gig of data a month when traveling, and 25 cents a minute for phone calls. And this plan works in over 200 countries. Although I generally make my phone calls on Wi-Fi through WhatsApp, like we spoke about earlier. So basically, you have to decide how much you want to keep in touch and which method works best for you. Tip 21, walking around Bali. Whether you're seeing sights or walking around town, it's generally going to be hot and pretty humid. So wear loose-fitting, breathable clothes, and comfortable shoes. Especially because the roads are not the best, both at sites and in the towns. I saw three people fall while I was there. They were okay. So basically wear comfortable clothes, good walking shoes, and watch your step. Tip 22. Items to carry around with you while traveling around Bali. Now I realize that most of these items are common sense and pretty much self-explanatory, so we're not going to stay too long on this list. But I do want to highlight a few of the items. Sanitizer and tissues or paper. Most of the bathrooms in Bali were fully stocked, although some were lacking in toilet paper, hand towels, or soap. So by carrying around tissues and sanitizer, it could save you in a pinch. Next up, tip 23, safety and scams. Now we felt Bali was a very safe island. We even felt safe walking around late at night, whether it be on the beach or in town. But I recommend to everybody to follow these simple rules when traveling. Always be aware of your surroundings. Don't flash money or expensive jewelry. And never leave your bags unattended. Now let's look at some popular scams. Now this isn't just for Bali, but for other cities as well. First, going to a money exchange place. Try to go to a reputable establishment, maybe one recommended from your hotel. And a popular scam here is they'll use a sleight of hand when they're counting back your money. So make sure you're always the last person to count your money before you leave. Moving on to ATM skimming. Try to go to a reputable ATM, either in a bank or at your hotel. Check to see if the ATM has been altered or tampered with. Cover your hand when you put your code in. And always check your bank account balance later that day and the next day to make sure everything adds up. Next up, taxis. 
If you get in a taxi and the meter is not running or they say it's not working, get out and try another taxi. This is the main reason I like to use the Grab app at the airport and around town because I know the price I'm paying before the ride. Next up, fake guides. Okay, they might not all be fake. They'll usually be standing outside popular sites and temples telling you you have to pay to get in or pay for a guide. Just walk past them and go to the official entrance. Next up on our list is extortion. I haven't seen it, but I've heard that it can happen at the airport. So when going through official channels at the airport and someone asks you to pay an extra fee, be wary of that. But most of the cases I have heard of have happened through traffic violations. If you get pulled over on the road in your car or scooter via a traffic violation, and this incident might be able to be settled with payment for this violation in the form of a cash exchange right there on the spot. And the last one is timeshares. Now, this isn't necessarily a scam, but it can be annoying. So if somebody comes up to you on the beach or on the street and offers you something free, like a few free nights at a hotel in exchange for sitting in a timeshare presentation, just say no thank you and go on your way. And never give out any personal information, your name, your number, where you're staying, unless you're actually interested in getting a timeshare. And that's up to you. Next up, tip 24, taxes and service fees. Yes, even in paradise, you can't escape taxes. For services like hotels and restaurants, you're gonna have to add a government tax and a service charge. Here we'll take a look at a restaurant we went to with an 8% service fee and a 10% tax. This next restaurant was on the beach, so the fees are a little higher. 10% on service fee and tax. And now this last place was a little confusing as they charged us a 10% service fee and 11% tax. I'm not sure if the amounts were switched or was just wrong. Either way, just be prepared to see these charges on your bill. Now, tip 25, learn some of the local language. I truly believe locals do appreciate it when you try to learn some of the language. Now, we always try to learn a little bit of the language every time we travel. This is easier for Lily than me since she knows so many languages. But here's a few words that might help you out on your trip to Bali. Here we are with bonus tip 26. Get to the airport early. And this is an important one. We received a text to arrive at the airport four hours early and we arrived three hours early and this was fairly early in the morning and the airport was very crowded. I'd say the wait time on the security line was about an hour and for passport control about 45 minutes and check-in line for our flight was another 45 minutes. Fortunately, we were flying business class on points of course, so we only had to wait 10 minutes to check in. But if we had to wait on the economy line, we might have missed our flight. In fact, we heard some people did. I know this can vary by what day of the week and what time you get to the airport, but get there early, just to be safe. Now, some final thoughts on Bali. This is our first episode in a series on Bali. We're going to cover videos in this series about our resorts, top sites, and more. So hit the bell below if you want to get notified about future episodes. And I really think there is one more thing you should consider when traveling from Europe and the Americas, and you have the time, try to break up your trip by experiencing and including other cities and countries in your itinerary. We usually do this on our last trip to Bali. We spent a few days in Singapore and a few in Tokyo, and it really didn't cost us much more. I hope this helps you the next time you travel to Bali. Safe travels. Please subscribe, like, and share to keep up with all our latest travel news, tips, and reviews. And we do appreciate it as it does help support the channel.